I don't think there's anything more relaxing than a day of fishing. Just kind of a lazy day out on the pond when you grab the gear out of the trunk of the car, tie on your favorite lure, and let her fly. The medical folks have all got us on these treadmills to get our heart pumping, but I say, give your old ticker a rest. Put your troubles behind you and spend a quiet day fishing. And I'll bet you a bucket of bait you had up more birthdays in a lifetime just trolling and reeling than you ever will huffing and puffing on those treadmills. Huh. All right. Of course, some of you folks are like mules. You gotta get hit on the head before you really get it. So, whether you're just dropping a 20 cent line on a two dollar pole or going for those record breakers with a fancy rig, enjoy this great sport of fishing. It'll give you more pleasure than a barrel of monkeys. And you know something? When the boss asks you where you're going for the day, just tell him that you need a little time to get back to nature to unwind. Just say, look, I'm gonna kinda kick back and forget about the pains of life. Ah, ah. Then just toss that workload aside for the day. Oh, uh, as you go out the door, give that sign on the door a little flip. The one that says, gone fishing. Oh, and uh, tell the boss that you'll see him tomorrow. Or maybe not. Well, you know, I was just thinking about this wonderful sport of fishing. You know, the first time I went fishing was right here in Collins Lake. My dad brought me out here, gave me a bamboo pole. It was, it was about the six feet. It seemed like it was about the six miles at the time. It had that black string on it, red and white bobber on it, a little uh, hook there. He had to put the worm on the course, but first time I dropped that line into this very lake, I knew that the fishing was my sport. Uh. Ah. <clears throat> Why don't we uh, take a look at this uh, wonderful sport uh, from the time of uh, <coughs> the cavemen when they first uh, discovered that uh, <coughs> they uh, they could uh, <coughs> fish? It's it. Uh, hey. Could have picked a better spot. Well, the, here we are. This is the home of a Grunt. He was the very first the caveman to discover a fishing. He also discovered the yelling. Now, I think that you can see that the Grunt wasn't as bright a guy as you would hope to find in your neighborhood, but he did know that the food could be gotten from the waters. The question was, how do you get that food out of the water and into your mouth? And so, the hunt was on. Now, Grunt didn't know how to catch fish, so he decided that he would first have to do something to attract the fish. Well, he did find that that just scared the fish, but he kept it trying. And this bozo even got the louder. Well, that was dumb. So Grant decided that if you could hunt animals with the bait, why not to try it on the fish? Grunt thought that the scent of a raw meat would attract the fish. Well, guess what? It didn't. However, it did attract his old friend, <laughs> the bear. Well, as you can see, this guy didn't have both oars in the water. But you would think that he could certainly outsmart a simple fish. <laughs> I, <laughs> maybe not. And so the game went on. 
The pitcher whines, here's the fish. D-Rack one. That salmon seemed right over the inside corner. Caught Grunt swinging. Last of the nine. Score still fish 30. Grunt nothing. Here's the fish. D-Rack two. Boy, that one seemed to sail a bit. Grunt signaling to get this one over the middle of the plate. This could be the old ball game. Here's the fish. D-Rack three. That's it. Get the bum out of here. So, the grunt then tried fishing with his trusty bow and arrow. Oh, are you kidding? He also introduced the two new physics of formulas. <laughs> the bow plus the arrow plus the fish equals the food. What he didn't know was that the bow plus the arrow plus the foot equals the pain. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Big pain. <laughs> Grunt's a fishing net might have been a big success, but he had a lot of trouble with the, the prototype. All right, the Grunt, let's see how this thing works. So just uh, give it a little flip there. There you go, but it uh, still there. Use your right hand on there and let go with the left. That's, you let go with the both. You got to hold on. Just give it a toss and see what I mean, folks. Ah! Try out the front. We're not catching rocks. Oh, boy. We got problems. Grant, listen. Throw. You, sh you should. You don't pull in anything. You got nothing. You know, in the, the cave days, you could actually hunt with a tree and the vine. It is the basic stuff. You just bend the tree and set the trap. The animal steps in it. Bingo. You're home eating barren potatoes. Now, this walnut thinks that a fish is going to get into that loop. First of all, there's going to be two of them in there. Uh, Grunt, that's where the fish goes. I'm telling you, Grunt, get out of the loop and don't test the vine. I, he's going to do it. Well, at least you caught something. Say, do you know that the very first fish that was caught was actually caught by mistake? It happened the day that Grunt was trying to toss a line to his buddy Grown on the other side of the river. Few people know that fishing was actually started by Grunt and Grown. Okay. Tell you. Uh -huh. ah. uh. 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 Ah, what? You bullet, bullet, bullet. Right? Uh. 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 What? Uh, 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 uh. Ah. Ah. And that's how fishing began. I got. Whoa, boy! I think you got a keeper there, Grunt. <laughs> well, fishing has come a long way since man's first catch. There's a whole bunch of things you can get to make this sport more enjoyable. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a look at some of the clothes and equipment available to the modern-day fisherman? <laughs> so long, Grunt. Well, first of all, it may be cold out there, so select a nice pair of long underwear, maybe a colorful pair of socks to go along with it, and, of course, some comfortable shoes. And, along with that, how about a nice, comfortable pair of pants? Gonna be in those pants all day. <laughs> Dork? Hmm? Attaboy. Once you get your pants on, all the way, then you might want to select a comfortable shirt. Now, remember, this shirt's gonna give you a lot of room so that you can be able to cast your rod. Pull it in, the girls are coming. That's good. They've passed by. Okay, now... Put on your belt. That'll keep your pants up and your shirt in. Put your belt on. Just fasten your belt. A nice, loose-fitting shirt so you'll be able to cast it. That looks comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now what you're going to need maybe is a nice fanny pack. You'll be carrying all your personals in here. Maybe your license or uh, valuables, your wallet, things of that nature. So make sure that's snug. You'll have that on most of the day. Why don't you pick that up and try to put that back on? <laughs> Watch the lid. Okay, fasten that. Make sure that it's snug so that... Why don't you make sure that it's snug? Stand up, pull it up. Well, if you can't get the thing to stay up like that, why not try a nice pair of suspenders? boy. Okay, get both of them fastened. And once you have the other side fastened, you're set for the day. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, boy. Now, what you might also want to have is a nice little vest. Now, these aren't too hot. Still leaves your arms free to fish. Pull the little zipper up. Whoops. Ah, <laughs> get those cheap vests. You might also want a hat. And, of course, you should get one to fit your personality. It's not quite your personality. Why not try that one? Ah. Mm-hmm. That's more in keeping with your personality. 
You're in a bug-infested swamp. You don't want mosquitoes getting around your face, so why not get a little protection from a mosquito net, which also provides good visibility. Yo, over here. Here. Yeah, that's it. It might get a little chilly at night, so why not have a little heavier coat? This one, too. You can also just zip up. Boy, those cheap zippers. <laughs> Regardless of how good a swimmer you are, put on a safety vest. And get one with a good zipper, because you might want to take it off. Oh. Now, you're going to want some other equipment, a nice sharp knife. You might want to place that on the back side. A little flashlight. Make sure you have batteries. You have batteries? No batteries. Okay. And a nice fish scale. A fish net. And, of course, a fishing pole. Camera to take shots of that catch, of course. <laughs> Another fanny pack. And a nice tackle box for your tackle. And, of course, a nice cooler for your coolings. And, of course, if you're really adventurous, how about a nice float tube? Careful. Oh, you find yourself a good lake, good fishing, with a good buddy. You got yourself a good day. Why, what a great day for fishing, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I normally come out here with uh, my good buddy, Billy Bob, and uh, we have a nice day of fishing, nice and chit to chat out there. <laughs> but um, he couldn't make it today. <laughs> so um, I talked my wife into coming. I didn't exactly talk her into coming. She has the car. I needed a ride. You know how that goes. But uh, it's her first time fishing, so <laughs> she's not uh, too excited about it. Of course, it's hard to get her excited about anything. Lately, but I'm sure she'll enjoy it. It's a great sport, and she, uh, here's the little uh, bee -bee -bee beauty now. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, it's hot out here. Right, it is a little uh, warm. Well, you know, when you get into nature's hotel, it's kind of hard to control the air conditioner. <laughs> My mascara is starting to run already. It is, uh huh? How is your mascara? I'd want to get off that property myself. It must be 90 degrees out here. Uh-huh. Well, uh, you know something, honey? Maybe it'd be a little cooler if you took one of those rodents off your neck. I told you this is not a rodent. It's a Kalinske. And Wonderful. we wore this because you were going to take pictures, and we want to look nice for the pictures. Right. I am going to take pictures. I'm going to take pictures of the fish that we catch. Well, why do you think I got dressed up if you weren't going to take pictures? I'm not taking a picture of you. I take a picture of the fish. You catch the fish. You hold them on the line. You take a picture. That's what you record. Do you understand that? Well, you said you were going to take pictures. I never said that's going to take a picture of you. I said they're going to hold up the fish. I go clickety click with the camera. That's what I Yes, you did. All right, I'll take a picture of you. Get in the boat. Well, how long is this fishing thing going to take? That's the wonderful thing about fishing. There is no time limit out here. You can fish as long as you want, and then when you're through and you got your catch, you well, can go okay, home. Okay, okay, but I have a bingo game this evening. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Great. That's right. We'll be home for bingo. Don't yeah. worry. Well, we better be. We will be. Now, let's get the stuff and get into the boat, all right? Well, I get a little nauseous in boats. Want to get nauseous? Try looking in the mirror. What was that? I said the water. It's very clear. Get the stuff, get in the boat, let's move out. Zippity-doo, right? Okay. Get to that cooler and let's get on with this thing, girl. It's well, what are you going to do, nap or fish? Hell, my dear, I got a little present for you to introduce you to this great game of fishing. There you go. Got your own rod and the reel, brand new. What do I do with it? What you do is, you just look for a little ripple over there in the water. It's a little fish you're feeding over there. So what do you do? You take that. You have a little toss over there. You take that lure, and you just... Like that? Did I do it wrong? Uh, just the lure. Not the whole thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, uh... 
We you had to spend it, a little more time in the introductory period there, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> Glad, like, well, well. To, yes. Well, <clears throat> fortunately, I got the spare here. Huh? It's uh, not the same as that little $300 rig that took a swim in there. <laughs> but uh, it'll uh, get the job done. Here, you just hold on to that. Okay. And I'll put this right in there for you. What's that on the end of it? That is a bacon. Bacon? That's what they're going to use it for your bait. Oh, that's, that's what happens to that's the bait. The bait. The bait. <laughs> that's what I want to do on the other one, yeah. to throw the bait in, but not the hole. You threw the hole. There you go. Now, you just let that go in there, and you watch for Bob to go. Then you pull that right out there, you get the fish on there, okay? Okay. I'll be over in this area. Where's your bacon? I don't have a bacon. Bacon, that is a for amateurs. I laugh. <laughs> See that on there? That's a loony barrel lure. That rubber skirt of the jig on there and a long claw dead down there. Yes, sir. 20 pound super duper test. Like that? I'm out for the big ones. It's wonderful. Bacon. I didn't say anything. Stop doing that with your gum. Why? Cause the fish hear that snappy, snappy, snap. That's what's scaring them away. You silly. Uh, fish have no ears. Fish have a little ears on there. They hear that snappy, snap. Oh, you silly. You just hey, silly. I got one. Wait a minute. I got the bite. I got the bite. I got to play them a little bit. I just give them a little. Harry, you almost took it that time. See that? Huh? See how I'm playing that fish like that? Give me that gum. Give me that gum. Give me that gum. Give me it. Give me it. Give me that gum. Stop chewing that gum. Ooh, See that? I lost that I fish. I hate That's you. It. I hate you. I don't care. See that? Look at that. Hate I got you. no fish. Look at that. Huh? Hmm? Huh? See that? There's your snappy snap. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Got that. This is boring. That's right. It's not so boring when I'm out here with my good buddy Billy Bob and we have a little a good buddy fishing talk out here. Boy, the time really goes as if it do right on by. See, that's the trouble. You don't have any good buddy fishing the conversation. Well, let's have a buddy fishing conversation. All right, let's do that then. All right, okay. We'll have a day good buddy fishing the conversation. Well, why don't you start? Oh, me? You want me to start? You start. Did you turn the coffee off this morning? No, you didn't, because I had to. <laughs> What's turning off the coffee got to do with the fishing out here? That has nothing to do with the fishing. Did you feed the bird? No, you didn't. You know why? Because I had to. I didn't to. feed the bird. I don't intend to feed the bird. I don't like it, that bird, to be perfectly frank. See, that's not the fishing talk. Oh, shut up. Oh, I got a bite. I got a bite. Pull it in. Do something. Push. Give it that pole. Bring it in. Look at that. Look at that. Huh? That's a, that's a really beginner's luck, isn't it? <laughs> you you got one, and uh, and I don't yet, but I, I I will get one because I got I got the real expensive pole. Here, why don't you just take that? Hold on to it. Oh, you can't fish. You don't you don't have any bacon on. Oh, I got another one. Another one. <laughs> Uh, all right, how did you get that even without the bait? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, here you go, just... Oh, there's another one. Here's a cutie. I'm sure of it. Hi! Shut up. I hate you. I don't care if you do or not. Why don't we get back to our happy couple in just a minute, huh? I'll tell you what. Why don't we join the Discount in Price TV Shopping Network? <laughs> Well, hi all again, folks, and welcome to the Discount in Price Shopping Network, better known as the DIP Shopping Network. 
where our loss is your savings. Mm -hmm. And our DIP operators are standing by to take your phone orders. So let's get on with the show. Now this portion of the show is devoted to you fishermen and fisherwomen out there looking for some bargains in the latest fishing equipment. And here to demonstrate the items is my good buddy, Dorf. Remember, if you wish to purchase any of the following items, and I'm sure you sportsmen are going to hook a few of these beauties. Get that play in words, buddy. Hook a few. <laughs> well, let's get on with these fine items. And remember, if you desire to purchase one, just call this number, 1555-DIP-FISH. Now, this is item 1448, Dips Hook Park. Hey, you talk about a convenient place to park a hook. <laughs> You're staring at it. How many times have you wanted to adjust your gear or grab a cold one and you got no place to park your hook for a minute? Well, your troubles are over me, amigo, with the dip hook park. You see, you just place the hook in park and you're free to reach for the cooler without worrying about running yourself through with that loose hook. Hey, it's a great gift item and real easy to attach to your fishing vest. Hey! Bring it back in that hole! Just a little cement glue and it's there forever. My hook! My... Uh, so if you'd like the Dip Hook Park for just $14.95, call 1-555-DIP-FISH now. Our operators are waiting to hear from you. Our next item we offer is the Dip Fish Scale. This handy lightweight number is ready to accurately weigh your catch of the day. And believe me, it's accurate to the ounce. Mm -hmm. Even if you're weighing your kid's only catch, which may be a good-sized minnow, you'll have a real count with a dip fish scale. Big or small, weighs them all. Hey, here's dip item 4333 for sale. You talk about filleting to frying in a hurry? This is the answer. The dip electric glow-in-the-dark fillet knife. It plugs into your car or cigarette lighter, and you're in business, my friend. Right. This 14-foot extension cord gives you plenty of room to plug in the dip knife and fillet your fish by the light of your headlights. And this little gem is not just for those lightweight piker bass. $24.95 gets you the dip electric filleter. Item 4333. Call now, and remember, it glows in the dark, so no chance of losing this guy. Here's your answer to your weight problem, folks. Just take a few minutes while you're fishing to do the Dorf Dip workout. Here's a sample of the many tunes you'll find in our exercise video, Fishing with Dorf. You know, people who don't fish think that all we do is sit around on Nara Duff all day. But you know that if you go fishing, you got to be in some kind of a shape. So I'll tell you what. Before you go out for a day's of fishing, why don't you loosen up those old bones? How about the doing some dipping with the door? We're going to start with our knee bed. Ready? And now we all know the name of this game. Big ones, small ones, none the same. It's a frustrating, fascinating part of life. Alter those arms now. Waking up early to get there on time. Bring your rabbit's foot. Lucky dime. And let's all head us out and have some fun. Let's get in into those lifts. Out fishing, it's the thing to do when you're feeling down in the Just pick up your rod and reel and go. Out fishing makes sense to me. The best thing. And life for free when you're out fishing. You all need to go out fishing. Take some time and go fishing. How many times do you wish you could just set your pole down for a minute and grab a sandwich or a cold drink? Well, Dip's Dock Locker is your answer. At 1895, you can set your pole and walk to the nearest cooler and back knowing you're still going fishing. You see, you just place your pole in the dip dock locker, secure it, sit back, and enjoy a cold one. And while you're enjoying a breather, if you should get a nibble, you can take your time getting back to that pole, because that pole ain't gonna go nowhere while it's securely locked in the dip dock locker. You'll enjoy taking a break knowing the dock locker is working for you. Oh, call now. Only three left. 
<laughs> Boy, how many times have you taken that next step and gone up to your neck in water? Well, here no more, my friend. The dip tube is here. You step into deep water and you're floating on a water cloud. No more stepping in that hole or going into water over your head. <clears throat> Get a dip tube. It provides you with plenty of mobility on any stream or pond. You don't have to worry about shallow water anymore. Know why? You can go anywhere with the adjustable dip troller. All you have to do is slide it up the adjustable clamp and you're in business. So if the big one is in shallow water, so are you with the dip troller. Oh, caution. Make sure the clamp is securely mounted to the side of the boat. So get in on this bargain now, because they're out the door at a fabulous savings. That's item 7372. Call now. Fish? Oh, there they are. Hey, it's that easy to spot them at any depth with the Dip Depth Dipper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you no longer have to wonder where they are with the Dip Depth Dipper. Bath, bath, bath. Big one, big one. This little sonar job tells you their size, weight, and home phone number. Those crafty little guys will no longer be able to run and hide. If they go left, go left. you go right. They go right, go right. You go right. Right, you dummy, right. Bath, bath, bath. Uh oh. Pontoon boat, pontoon boat. Mayday, mayday. Call 911. Yes, you'll be the envy of every guy in the lake with the DDD. That looks like a school of a walleye to me. Watch where you're going, Trout Head. Trout, Trout, Trout. Go left, go right. You moron. Bail out, bail out. Your DDD will guide you. I don't think I can. You can now make boat launching as easy as falling off a log. Your troubles are over with the Dip Boat Launcher. All you do is have your boat back into the water of the launching ramp. Once you feel you're afloat, just release the Dip to Shore Boat Launcher and you are on your way to a day of carefree fishing. Now when you've caught your limit and you're ready to go home, just guide your boat onto the Dip to Shore guide rails, lock in place, you're on your way. Now, while other guys are struggling to get their boats back into the trailer, you're on your way home to Mama. Hey, be the first in your neighborhood to own a dip to shore boat launch. Hey! <laughs> well, fishing buddies, time's up. So join us tomorrow on Dip. The discount in price shopping network. Until then, good fishing. Hey. And good fishing to you, buddy Bill. Hey! Billy Bob, listen to me. Hold it. Whoa, hey, Billy Bob, I'm back here. Billy Bob, turn the radio down. I think we're going to need the net on this one. Oh, yeah, there's a big one. Okay, get that. All right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, very good. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Uh, well, why don't I use your pole, and then the, you can use this brand new one right there. You can you can use mine, and I'll use yours uh, for a while. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh -oh. You seem to be having the run of luck on yours. Okay. So why don't oh, I? Oh look, honey, I got one on your line. You you got one on my pole now. All right, let me get that for you. That's a that's a beauty on my on my pole. Let me take my pole back. You take. Let me use both poles. Okay, well, look, I have another one on here. Do you want me to leave them on the line, or do you, what, what would you like? Give them to me. Okay. There you go. 
Right. Oh. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to use this pole. You use my pole, all right? Whatever. Okay. How long does this fishing thing have to go on? Cause well, I, I get my own fish, all right? Well, I have a bingo game. I'm not going until I get one of my own. Hmm. Your bacon's gone. I'll tell you what. Why don't we get back to our happy couple? Because I happen to notice that it's time for my favorite cooking show, Cooking with Carly. Everything you ready here? Welcome to our show, Cooking with Carly. Tonight, as you know, we're going to be preparing our famous outdoor dinner, taters, fish, and biscuits. Of course, you'll be preparing that, as we told you last night on our show, out there at your campsite. So I hope you'll be following right along with us. Right. I got so, the aluminum foil. Put our yammering here and get on with the show. <laughs> now, first of all, we're going to be preparing our potatoes. Potatoes? No problem. We're I got them right. Wash our potatoes like this. I didn't plan to wash them. I just. We want them damp. When we put them into the fire, take a piece of foil. Your foil out there at your campsite. Rip it off. Wrap your potato in there. Not too tight, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> could you slow down a little? I'm having a little trouble with. There we go. All right, now we're going to be preparing next, before we get to our biscuits, our fish. So, get your fish ready and we're going to flay it. Get yours, I'll get mine. I haven't prepared my potatoes yet. They're not they're really ready. Woo! -hoo. Why, that, uh, that's been under the lights a little longer than we had anticipated here. Cool. Ow! In order to fillet your fish, you really take your fillet knife like this, and you're going to just run it down the inside of your fish like this. One quick swipe like this. There you go, and it's open. It's that simple. You go right ahead and cut yours, and I'll wait here. Whoa! Ah! Uh, might want to get downwind of that. Now, if you're having a little trouble laying your fish, your knife may be a little dull. I think my wife's been cutting cardboard boxes with this. I don't What uh... you want to do is just bring it across your sharpening stone toward you several times. Make sure, though, that you watch out for your finger. You want to cut that? Ah. Woo -hoo. Wow. Wah. Now that we've mm. laid down the inner part of our fish there. Get an oily rag on that main artery really there. Just reach right in and just Pull out that bone, it'll all come in one piece. Very simple, I... I whoa, Howard! Boy, this guy's been run over or something. Oh, well, Howard is getting that bone out. We're going to be preparing our biscuits. Very simple. You're going to take your biscuit mix. Biscuit. And you just open uh, your box out there at your campsite. Now, as you know, we told you out there at your campsite to get your waterproof Biscuit mix, very simple to open. Show you how it's done. You merely grab the top like this and just pull it. There you go, just like that. Very simple. You go ahead and do yours. I'll show you again in slow motion how to do that. There you go. So now we're going to take three quarters cup of water, pour it into a bowl, take your uh... whisk. Don't Mix have my uh, mixing. Boom, that, that. <clears throat> Going to put this into our little biscuit pan here, like this. Just a little dab in each one. Very simple. I'll now place this in the oven. Ah. Uh. And a couple of things I might warn you about. <clears throat> this isn't the same consistency as yours. Make it, sure uh, that when you touch those little handles on that little oven that you made, that you be careful now because that could be awfully hot. Woohoo, boy, could it? Give you a little ah, snap. <laughs> so you put those biscuits in there and then just wait for those. It only takes eight minutes. Now you're going to take your fish and place it in your frying pan. That's going to cook just like that, so be careful. Fish. Also, uh, a suggestion I might make that when you're through with your biscuit mix out there that you might want to seal it again by putting some plastic wrap around it. Just tear off a piece that quickly place it right around your biscuit mix like that. All you campers out there, how you like to keep your mix dry. Now, while we're waiting for our biscuits there and our taters, 
We'll see if our fish is done. Fish. And of course, ah. be careful when you pick up that little pan there that the handle's not hot because ah. you could really get a bite there. Ah. And I'd like to remind you again, you want to make sure that you didn't put that potato right in the middle of your coals. You want to put it out towards the edge because there's much too much heat there in the middle and it's level to on you. I told you that last night, did you remember? My potatoes blow. Good. All right. Now, we have our fish ready to go, fried and everything, and just about prepared our whole meal for you. And uh, now I'd like to show you what it looks like in a finished presentation. I'll get it from Howard. Boo! My uh, potatoes blow. I, I'll get the biscuits. Uh. So here we have a beautiful meal here. As you can see, our biscuits here, those are our eight-minute biscuits. You take yours out and just look how lovely they came out. I'm sure even with your campfire out there, of course, in high altitude, you're going to have to allow an extra two minutes. Right. And here's what it looks like for our presentation there. There you see our, oh boy, our fish there. Maybe we didn't fry that enough. And anyway, we have our fish there and our, and our baked potato. Lovely presentation there. And there you have biscuits, fish, and your tater dinner. They're beautiful. And of course, we'll always top that off with a little bit of sauce, as you know. So that'll be nice out there. This will also be nice for you as you gather around the campfire with your friends out there and just throw one back. <laughs> Okay, okay, not every meal is fit for a king. I always hate to see the sun set on a good day of fishing, but I always know that another one is just around the corner. Some guys can't come soon enough. catch one of these little suckers and not to have something on the, my little pole before I go home. You got another thingy coming. By, by golly, I... Uh, hey! hey! I hope you bingo card the catches on the fire! <sighs> hey there, anyway. Could use some bacon, though. Took that with her. And in the neck. Could have never given her that fur in the first place. Hard to tell whether she's actually wearing it or looking at that or her. And you should have gone on the diet! Don't forget my wallet! The hell are anybody? Should I borrow an the oar? The woo the who? Can't be past midnight too much. Doodly who to the who? Ah, the credits. <laughs> 